Eve, it is now, you're now up to talk about SB1. Thank you very much, Amy. <clears throat> Thanks to everyone for allowing us to uh, share with you um, what our um, SB1 requirement is for this year. As you're aware, since 2009, we've had a reporting uh, requirement to monitor our EPPs on uh, updates with regard to SB1, and our partner in this is the Council on Post-Secondary Education. Um, and so Amanda and I have partnered in this today, and we have brought to you um, two uh, experts, you might say, in the uh, curriculum process. Uh, we will be sending as normal. This is going to be the requirement this year for meeting SB1. Uh, we are recording this, so uh, we will send a link um, after this is over to the deans or EPP leaders so they can share it with the faculty that aren't present on this um, session today. Um, and they will then report to us uh, if their faculty have been updated. So um, this is just going to be simply the update that's required this year. And I'm going to allow Amanda right now to take over to add what she wishes to this and to introduce our two experts. Thank you, Eve. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you and um, see some faces with names and many of you I've met before. Um, before joining uh, CPE recently as the Associate uh, Vice President of K-12 Policies and Programs, I was at KDE as the Associate Commissioner of the Office of Teaching and Learning and uh, met many of you early uh, in my time uh, with PGES and when it's uh, KTIP switched over and, and a lot of that work. And um, this piece has, has always been um, something even I've talked about over the last several years about how making it how we need to make it more meaningful for you um, because there are lots of changes that are going on um, at the department and specifically around standards and resources and I can tell you uh, in my time at KDE I think the two ladies who are going to present to you today um, you won't find any better uh, they are simply experts and they have been in the weeds uh, with this work, the processes, and have put a lot of time and effort into being strategic to provide school districts exactly what they need and when they need it. Um, this is relevant work, uh, and it is what we are pushing back on to really establish firm foundations and to um, increase true opportunities for all students. Um, it's a monumental task, but it absolutely takes every one of us. And so um, I will definitely let you uh, get to the, the meat of our, uh, our presentation today. So you're going to hear from Krista Hall. She's the Director over Program Standards in the Office of Teaching and Learning, and Misty Higgins, and she is our Professional Learning Coordinator. Um, and these ladies are going to share some excellent resources. But my hope today is not that you just hear, you sit and get, and you check it off, but that we engage further throughout uh, the year and make a continuous process of learning together small snippets and really help make sure you all have exactly what you need for your pre-service teachers, the candidates who are in each of your programs um, and that they have relevant up-to-date information about what's going on and what practicing teachers are held accountable for, what they are learning, what's new for them. Um, so your pre-service teachers are as prepared um, and have as many resources and tools in their toolboxes as uh, possible um, to get to the best quality, just as Amy spoke of earlier. So we're just thrilled to be a part of your meeting today. Thank you for adding us to the agenda and um, giving us the opportunity. So I'm gonna turn my video and sound off and turn it over to Krista and Misty. So thank you guys. Thank you, Amanda. And, and I just wanna reiterate as well, how much we appreciate the opportunity to talk with you all because we recognize that you all have such great influence over all of the teacher candidates that are coming in. And um, oftentimes, you know, we look at our teacher candidates, they can bring in some of the newest information that, that many of our practicing educators may not have had an opportunity uh, to be exposed to yet them as um, vehicles for learning uh, to bring into those practicing educators. So um, like Amanda said, Misty and I, we are way in the weeds of standards and you know we could talk to you for days about it. We're pretty sure you would like us not to, uh, so we won't, but uh, we do want you to know that we're a resource for you. And so at any time um, that you have questions or uh, even if you want to have further discussions, please reach out. Uh, we definitely 
um, would we would, would enjoy that uh, collaboration and that partnership and we just think that it, it advantages everybody involved. Um, and so before we uh, start to move into this process, I want to back up just a little bit about um, how we got here. And I know Eve was referencing the required update that we have each year, but back in 2017, KRS uh, 158.6453 actually established a process for developing and revising academic standards. And part of that process also laid out who would be the participants in this work. And not only were the participants K-12 educators and community members, but we also had post-secondary faculty on every committee in each grade band of all of the content areas as we revise these standards. And so not only do we thank you for that time from those uh, faculty members, but the expertise and the perspective that they provided during this process really has made the development of these standards um, even stronger. So when we first start, we look at what is the purpose of our standards. And it's really for the Kentucky academic standards, it, it's the baseline that ensures that all students across Kentucky will have a common set of standards um, of an expectation to learn and are provided those opportunities to learn at high levels. Now, while there is that common set of standards that are established for all students, the st those standards do not establish what those learning experiences will look like in the classroom. Um, that is actually individualized. So on the next slide, and, and although this is a simple table, um, I think the, this is where we get some of the most confusion. And it's really around the differences between standards, curriculum, and the instructional resources. And so I'm gonna use an analogy. You have probably heard this, you may have used this yourself, but it really helps our educators understand the differences because sometimes they don't even know there is a difference. Um, so um, the analogy I'll use, it, it, it relates to sports. And so we look at the standards, they're almost like the rule book. And the rule book is established, it is the same rules for everyone playing the sport. The rules do not change. Um, and those rules are determined by that athletic governing agency. Just like the standards are determined by the state and they do not change and they stay consistent for all students in the state of Kentucky. Then the next layer is actually that playbook and the playbook is what is designed by that coaching team to uh, use those rules, make sure that they are following the rules and um, creating plays that will meet the needs of their players uh, to be most effective in that sport. And so when we think about the curriculum, that is what is designed at the local level, following the standards, but that is going to be individualized based on what is most needed um, in, in to meet potentially those regional needs of those students in that area. And then when we get into the instructional resources, that is where we get into our textbooks and our programs and our manipulatives. And those are also decided at the local level. Um, one thing, you know, oftentimes, you know, we'll talk to educators and they, they believe their program or their textbook, they use that as their curriculum. And they will often feel like that is their standards. And, and we can say, and I can say this with 100% confidence, there is not a program or a textbook out there that is completely aligned to the Kentucky academic standards. Um, and so equipping our teachers with the ability to review those materials so that they can see where the gaps are and make uh, and, and supplement where needed is one of the first tasks that, that will need to occur. And then with that, on our next slide, we have um, the, 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 the purpose of really starting with those standards. Just like if we didn't start with the rule book and just started creating plays, there's a good chance that those plays either wouldn't be effective or they wouldn't be allowed. And it's the same way with our standards. If we don't start with the standards and we have our educators start developing uh, curriculum or lessons, there's a good chance that 
either the lessons that they are developing aren't rigorous enough based on what the curriculum should be or that they shouldn't be allowed because they're not on grade level. Um, and so by starting with those standards to develop that high quality curriculum grounded in those standards, it actually ensures that every student, whether it's Pike County, Jefferson County, Fulton County, that they all have access to that same content and that same expectations. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Misty now, and she's gonna really get into the specifics of the resources that we have um, available to really assist our teachers um, as they progress in this work. And one of the things we also wanted to do today is also highlight resources that we have for leaders as well, because many of you may be working with some of our future leaders um, in your classes. And so we're going to highlight some of our resources that are important for both groups. But around this understanding of the role of the standards curriculum instructional resources, we believe that's foundational, that they come out knowing that difference to ensure that those kids are getting equitable environments. So to help with that, we come to our model curriculum framework. The model curriculum framework is something that was called out in legislation. There is a statute around it, which you can see on the screen, that says that KDE shall provide to schools and districts what you see in bold on the screen. So it shall provide direction to local schools and districts as they develop their curriculum. It should identify teaching strategies, assessment strategies, um, resources for the community and how to incorporate. You can see multiple things were called out within that model curriculum framework. The original model curriculum framework, it was released back in the 90s. Well, based on current needs that we see in schools and districts, we are in the process of revising the model curriculum framework. So what you see on the screen is actually the draft outline of that revision. So as we revise kind of sections at a time, we're releasing those. And one of the things we wanted to do quickly today was just to um, share with you what's in this model curriculum framework, who really is the intended audience for that work, and how does it help create the big picture of what teachers and leaders need to know as they're coming out of prep programs. So back in March, we released the first two sections of the model curriculum framework. That included the introduction, which really laid out the rationale for why it's so important to understand the difference between standards curriculum and instructional resources, as well as a section on the curriculum development process. At the end of the day, one of the things that we noticed in talking with schools and districts, many of them did not have a systematic way to approach curriculum development, how to ensure that their local curriculum is aligned to the Kentucky academic standards. So we did a lot of research and from that research around what is best practice in curriculum development, we drafted a section of that framework that helps schools and districts by providing them a step by step process they could utilize at the local level to translate the standards into a high quality curriculum. It also includes a toolkit of resources that can support educators through the process. Now the intended audience for that curriculum development process section is really school leaders. They should be the ones facilitating that work, organizing that work as a curriculum committee at the local level, works through a specific content area, designing the curriculum and aligning it to the Kentucky academic standards. So again, that process, that section was released in March. We have a lot of supporting materials to help um, develop understanding of it, but the intended audience for that is really the school and district leaders. Because if we can't at the local level, start with a high quality curriculum aligned to the standards in place, we're never really going to get to the point of ensuring equitable access in classrooms for our students across the state. Now, the next piece that we will soon be releasing is under that curriculum implementation section. So how do we ensure that our written curriculum, this intended curriculum that's been developed at the local level, how do they ensure that that's actually what gets implemented and taught at the classroom level? Well, that's where the role of PLCs come into play. And so this section we will be releasing this fall and the target audience is both teachers and leaders because it's really going to address how the structure of the PLC process can help bridge the gap between your intended curriculum and what actually gets implemented at the classroom level. Um, in that section, we are going to talk about why we need PLCs, what uh, really defines the work of the PLC, 
as well as how can school and district leaders support implementation of PLCs? And then finally, what does it mean to be an effective teacher in a PLC? Many of our teachers are gonna come out of their teacher prep programs and be thrown into these PLC structures. So the better understanding they have of what is that process, what does it look like, and how do I really bring the kind of characteristics, beliefs um, to the table that's gonna support our students into that PLC process, the more prepared and the easier the transition is going to be for them. The next section you see on curriculum implementation is right. assessment. We're going to be releasing that section later this winter. And the point of that section is really to look at the different uh, types of assessments that are out there and what's the purpose of each of those assessments. And then it's going to take a deep dive into formative assessment because we know from the research that's where we can really impact student achievement. That intended audience for the section will really be our teachers. And then finally, um, next fall, we're going to release that last section on curriculum in, uh, implementation around the instructional best practices. So how do we take this curriculum at the local level that is aligned to the Kentucky academic standards, take what we know about best practice and assessment, and then use evidence-based strategies in planning and designing our lessons to help students meet the grade level expectations in the standards. So that's really the intent of the model curriculum framework. And again, we only have section one and two out, but the PLC will come out in late fall, the balanced assessment will come out late winter, and then the instructional best practice will come out early next year. And so on the appendix, you can also so see that's where we are including eventually some things that were also specifically called out in that statute and those will be coming are coming piece by piece as well. Now, we also wanted to let you know that along with all of our other resources, there is kind of a one stop shop that you can go to for everything standards related, and that is kystandards.org. And we also send out a KY standards newsletter, and we strongly recommend that you all sign up for that, that you have your teachers sign up for it, um, because it's keeping you up to date on the most recent resources that we have and when they are released. When you go to the home screen, you're going to see you have kind of two tabs that you can click. The first tab is explore your standards. So when you go here and you click on that tab, it's going to take you to all of the Kentucky academic standards for quick and easy access. Then the second tab is called your standard resources. When you click on it, you're going to see that everything's divided into two basic categories. We have general resources and content area resources. In the last year, it is kind of amazing how many resources we have been able to develop um, and give to our teachers and leaders to help support standards implementation. But today, there are just a few of those that we want to highlight that we feel like if leaders and teachers coming out of programs have knowledge of these resources, have had opportunity to practice utilizing these resources, they're definitely better prepared to come in and start, um, I think, really designing standards aligned instruction and assessment. So the first one is really designed for leaders, and that is our implementation guidance documents. Really, the purpose of these documents is to assist schools and districts in identifying resources that are available to support different stages of standards implementation. We recognize across the state, everyone's in kind of a different place with implementing the different sets of standards. So we wanted to provide them with something that said, okay, if you're asking this question, or you're at this stage of implementation, what resources do we have to support you at that exact stage? We have a general guidance document as well as one for each of the four core content areas of reading and writing, mathematics, social studies, and science. And we do consider them living documents. So as new resources are added, we update the general guidance or the implementation guidance documents to match. So just to give you a snapshot of what these would look like, this is the general implementation guidance document. We actually just released this one a couple of weeks ago. So just in general, looking at what we've already talked about from that model curriculum framework, what are the big picture pieces that a school or a district might need to start with around standards implementation? The format that you see is a similar format for all of the guidance documents. So you'll see the first thing is like a question. So what resources are available to my school or district to support aligning our local curriculum to the academic standards? And then for each question, you're gonna have resources available to support. So it's gonna name the resource, it's gonna have it hyperlinked for quick, easy access, it's gonna give a description of the resource, and then like you can see on the second resource under that first question, if there are supporting materials, so like PowerPoints, facilitator guides, all of those are hyperlinked in the document as well.
And then this is just a snapshot from what one of the content area ones would look like, specifically here, mathematics. So you can see like that second question, I'm new to the cash for mathematics. And that's probably true of a lot of our pre-service teachers. So where do I start? So what you're gonna see is a list of resources in a recommended order. So where applicable, we try to build in a recommended order that's building their understanding deeper and deeper over time. So it's gonna list out, hyperlink all of those resources to help a teacher just really dig into and build foundational understanding of the Kentucky academic standards in that content area. Now, there are three resources for teachers that we feel like if they came out of pre-service programs really understanding and having had an opportunity to utilize, we're better ensuring that our students are getting quality instruction at the classroom level around the Kentucky academic standards. So I'm gonna quickly talk about each of these. The first is the getting to know the CAS modules. These were released um, back last summer and these are so huge in developing foundational understanding of our standards document. And it really helps the teachers as they work through it to see how the components that are in the architecture of our new standards documents, how those components really support teachers in creating high quality standards aligned classroom instruction and assessment. And really as teachers go through these modules, it's helping them to see how the standards are really going to have implications on what student experiences across the state of Kentucky should look like at the classroom level. The great thing about these modules, they come with a facilitator's guide. So anyone could pick up that facilitator's guide and lead a group through getting really to know the standards for whatever that particular content area might be. So whether you're a professor and you wanna lead a class through this, or you divide your um, class into different groups and each group is taking a deeper dive, they have that facilitator's guide to really step-by-step um, -step lead them through um, going through the standards document, understanding the different components and walking away with, okay, these are some big implications for classroom instruction and assessment based on what we're learning about the standards. So it starts for our teachers right here with really getting to know the standards document because again, it is unlike, they are all unlike any standards documents we've ever had before because of all of the support that's built within them to help teachers better understand what those standards are asking. So once they have that big picture foundational understanding of what the standards are, how the document's structured, the second resource that we have is it's called the breaking down of standard resources. So when they understand the standards document, then how do they begin to look at individual standards to really gain clarity on what are the standards asking students to know and be able to do so that they can meet the grade level expectation. And so by using this protocol, it's just a protocol that they go through where they're looking looking at this place in the standards document, what does it say about the standard? They're looking at all those different components, answering questions to really at the end of the day, be able to say, okay, this is how I need to make sure I align my instruction and assessment to um, help students meet the depth of the standard. Because one of the things that we see across the state oftentimes is that we're not getting to the true depth of the standard. We often stay at a surface level piece of it, but this protocol really helps teachers ensure that they are meeting the true depth of the standard. And then the final one. So once teachers have that better understanding of what this uh, standard wants students to know or be able to do, how do they ensure that their assignments, their tasks are really designed to help students meet the depth of it? And that's where we have the assignment review protocol as well as the student assignment library. Now the protocol itself is all about walking teachers through analyzing a task to see does that task really meet the intended depth of the standard or standards they're looking at. And if not, how might they tweak the task, don't just throw it out, but how could they tweak the task to ensure that it does help students meet those grade level expectations. The student assignment library, which I have to say is one of my favorite things because sometimes we have to visualize. So what would a grade level appropriate assignment look like around a particular standard? So for each content area, we have the student assignment library with lots of different samples of different tasks that have been rated as either poorly aligned, 
partially aligned or strongly aligned to the academic standards and they get a sense of okay this is what it really takes for students to eventually meet the depth of the standard this is the type of task i have to eventually work them up to guide them and scaffold so that they're able to do this level of work to meet that grade level expectation so these are just some of the biggest resources that we feel like if our pre-service teachers could walk away with a strong understanding of that would really support them and then we know that that's a lot of information in a short amount of time. All of those resources we just talked about are available on KY standards, but we're going to be on here for some questions today in case you have them. But we also wanted to just provide you our email addresses because like Krista said, we value a partnership with you all and we want to collaborate. So if you have any questions even beyond today, um, there are email addresses on the screen. Great. Thank you. Um, if you all have any questions, could you all just please type that in the chat and then I can facilitate uh, individuals for uh, to answer any questions that you may have. 